Turn to somebody and say, thank you for being a reflection of me this morning. Go ahead, say good morning. Because we are uh, all indeed a reflection of one another, yes? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, you know, before I get started this morning, I want to I wanna just express my gratitude for all the hearts and hands that really supported me in being here this morning. This amazing hospitality that Santa Fe has, how, how beautiful and enlightening it is. You know, I'm, I'm here from Kentucky. I'm just a girl from the holler. And uh, so this is a new experience for me and I've really enjoyed myself. And I especially uh, want, want to shout out to Walter and Barbara for opening up their home to me. Uh, thank you so much for your hospitality and let's give them some love. Yes, yeah. right. And Deborah and all of the, the board and the search committee, you know, it's, a, it's an exciting time right now for the Santa Fe Center for Spiritual Living. So please, just drop into that heart space and take a deep breath with me right now. And know with me in that moment that we are here to experience a shift in consciousness together as a community, the Santa Fe Center for Spiritual Living. As we take a deep breath and release it out, know that right where we are, spirit is simply breathing itself as each one of us together, individually and collectively. Right where you are and right where I am, the fullness of spirit is expressing itself as you and me. Not just a tiny little bit of God exists, not just a tiny little bit of spirit is right where you are. Never ever think of yourself as part of spirit, but instead I invite you to contemplate the reality of the fullness of God that rests in through and as your very being. And this is why you are here this morning, here to release anything that would stand in the way of your light in the world, anything that would stand in the way of the love that you are and the love that you embody and that you can express and give away because that love that I speak of, that spiritual love that is the truth of you is your superpower. So stand in that. It is the sustainer and the maintainer of all as well as the creator itself. And you are indeed the beloved. Now feel what it feels like. Just take a moment perhaps as you close your eyes and drop even deeper into that space where deep meets deep, that heart space, that soul space, and feel what it like, feel what it feels like to really step into the realization of who you are, that you are indeed spirit incarnated right here, right now, to give your gifts away. Feel what it feels like to never want or desire or need in this moment, anything. To just be fully present right here and right now, to let go of any lack that you may be experiencing in your life right now and step into the fullness and the love that you are. Know with me, stand with me and know with me that your sacred life knows no lack, no limitation, that your sacredness has never been harmed or endangered and has never been refused, that the universe has always got your back. It is never here to make your life miserable. It's always got your back, so it's here to support you in all the things that you do. It doesn't matter where you whether you believe in God or not. God is just a word and you assign your own meaning to it because your soul, you see, has caused you to be here this morning, regardless of whether you were walking down the hall and you say, hey, where's all those people going? I want to see what they're doing. Your soul has called you to be fully present here this morning and your soul has set its own intention so release any preconceived ideas or notions of what it might be like here this morning and take another deep breath in and repeat after me i am unbounded love i am, unbounded I am the reflection of the one, I am the reflection of one. 
And I am love. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I'm starting to feel the energy a little bit. Are you starting to feel it? <laughs> starting to feel it. Okay. All right. All right. Because I got to work myself up. You know what I'm saying? So here's the deal. Our global theme this month at uh, Centers for Spiritual Living, we have global themes that 99% uh, of our ministers uh, internationally use so that we're all talking about the same thing. And our global theme this month is divine discomfort, which is really apropos, isn't it? Because uh, anytime change is happening, we're having a little discomfort and it's a divine discomfort. So it's somewhat perfect for this community at this present time. And life itself can be uncomfortable. And when you think about it, when you really think about it, birth itself is a shift, right? Birth itself is a shift from warm, right? Comfortable, oh, I love my mama, right? Into this, uh, from this nurturing safety into this cold, terrifying chaos. And it's our very first experience with divine discomfort. And here's the thing. When I am experiencing discomfort, divine or otherwise, I know a change is going to come. Right? Just like the song, Lord, a change is going to come. Right? And so change can sometimes, for me, if I'm anticipating it, I get quite uncomfortable. Because we like to be in control. We like to know what's happening in our lives, right? So it means life itself can be uncomfortable. In science of mind, the discomfort of change highlights the importance of embracing conscious awareness, positive, but not wishful thinking that is based in principle and aligning our beliefs with the creative power of the universe. Again, and not that the universe always has our back. The universe is always saying yes to us. But what happens in the midst of change is we often try to manipulate or control it, forgetting that we have a choice, right? You ever, you ever think like, oh God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? We always have a choice. And, and the truth is we're making choices every day of our lives. You all made a choice to be here this morning. And before you even got here, you made a choice of what to wear. Right? You made a choice of what to eat or not eat before you got here and what route you took to get here. So we're making choices all of the time. And underneath our choosing, what happens very often is we are learning. And we're learning to live our best, most adventurous life, you see, hopefully by choosing love over fear. and listening to our true north. In Science of Mind, we read that nature will not let us stay in one place too long. She will let us stay just long enough to gather the experience necessary to the unfolding and advancement of the soul. That's very important. Nature demands the change in order that we may advance. By trusting the universe, you see, and I'm inviting you to trust me this morning and to trust the universe, because when we do this, we are able to embrace change with openness. Because very often what happens is when I know change is coming, I close down. You know, maybe I don't want it to happen. But if we can embrace change with openness, we become willing to, resi to release resistance, don't we? And in releasing resistance, we can experience personal growth and create a more fulfilling life. I want to break it down. Our core awareness, you see, is a field of infinite possibilities. Everything that has ever been created thought or imagined has emerged from pure consciousness. We often forget, you see, that, that this inner reality of love 
because we were birthed out of love, this inner reality of love, freedom and creativity, we forget it and we feel often trapped into old habits and conditioning. It's important to remember that our true nature is infinite possibilities because that helps to keep us from slipping into those limiting mental habits. And of course, it's easier said to do, uh, than done, right? It's easier said than I can stand up here and say it all day. Everything that you have, every choice that you have ever made in your life has brought you to this moment. Everything, every experience you have ever had has brought you to this moment to be here right now. And the truth is, we live in a physical universe where nothing is ever lost. The energy that makes up the universe is a constant, is constant, and it never runs out. The energy of spirit cannot be depleted, exhausted, or destroyed. The energy of love can never be depleted, exhausted, or destroyed. And a good example of that is, maybe I'm going to date myself here, but do y'all remember the, uh, the uh, commercial about the batteries that were featured in the Energizer Bunny? You know, it kept going and going and going and going, right? That's the universe. You know, one of my favorite transcendentalists was Ralph Waldo Emerson, often called the father of early transcendentalism. And he fully understood the love and the beauty of simplicity in nature and the universe. And he understood this, this truth that I'm speaking right now, that we live in an inexhaustible universe, one that must continue. It must create, it must continue to create out of itself and must express itself. And guess what? It can only create what is like itself. Who does that make you if it's only creating what is what is like itself so he wrote the simplicity of nature is not that which may be easily read but is inexhaustible so if this is true what that means is that spiritual energy is infinite and it must be expressed and this in turn means that there is always enough to share and to spare. It is an, a universe of abundance. And the only thing that can limit this experience or expression for any of us is our attitude and our belief. So the first step in creating a new experience is to become aware of your attitude and your beliefs. Now, we often don't talk about attitude unless we say an attitude of gratitude, right? Anybody ever hear that? You know, because what you are grateful for expands and what you take for granted, you will lose. So I want you to think about something when you begin to become aware of your attitude, you begin to tap into the power of spirit because when you tap into this universal spirit, you are tapping into a power that is always available to you. God never shuts its doors, right? In fact, if God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. So it's not a power that you have to beg for. It expresses through you and as your very being. And stepping into your spiritual power gives you the ability to choose your attitude and to reevaluate your beliefs and decide, is this decision, is this choice that I'm making from love or something else like fear or anger or control? The sooner you recognize your power is the sooner you begin to accomplish your goals, the sooner you step up to the plate and do what you were called here in this lifetime to do, the sooner you not only make your own life better, but you make the world a better place. And the sooner you let go or surrender 
you start to evolve and deepen your, your connection to this universal power. And the sooner you can begin to, to create a life that you want. While I was living in California, I used to take flying lessons. I used to fly a small Cessna. And in flying airplanes, it's very important. The, the attitude is the position of the aircraft in relationship to the horizon, right? So while flying, we have to be in the moment, but we must consistently be aware of our attitude. Spiritual attitude, however, is your position in relationship to the power of the universe. I'm going to break it down even more. As I said earlier, your personal attitude comes from your most dominant thoughts. And therefore, your actions are largely governed by those inner thoughts and beliefs about the world. If you believe the world is against you, you will draw in everything to be against you. If you believe that the law is a loving, uh, that the world is a loving place, then you will draw love into your life. So some might say that a bad attitude could come from dwelling on stories you make up about why things in your life do or do not work. And we all make up stories because we're fixers, we're human beings. And we want to we want to reason everything out and some might say a good attitude can be created by letting go of the why. And doing the next indicated step to get you to where you want to be in life, how many times do we try to control our next step instead of just taking our next step and you know allowing the universe to choose what that step looks like. Right? So keeping in mind, it is your attitude, not your aptitude that creates possibilities. Let me give you an example. One morning, a little boy was overheard uh, uh, out in the, uh, as he strutted through the backyard, right? He's, he's wearing his baseball cap and he's toting a ball and a bat. And as he's walking out there with his ball and the bat, he's saying, I am the greatest hitter in the world. I am the greatest hitter in the world. So then he picks up his bat and he takes the ball and he throws the ball into the air and he swings his bat and he misses. Strike one, he says. Undaunted, he picks up the ball, throws it up in the air, says, I'm the greatest hitter in the world, swings and misses. He picks up the ball and he looks at it. Now, hmm. Strike two, he cried. So he examines his bat. Hmm, yeah, okay. Still pretty intact at his bat, right? And looks at his ball carefully. And he spits on his hands, right? And he throws the ball up in the air again, takes his bat and swings and misses again. Strike three. And he stops, looks around and he says, I am the greatest pitcher in the world. <laughs> Even though he was focused on hitting the ball, he did not limit his field of vision. He had put himself in a box in the beginning. That box was the greatest hitter. However, he hadn't shut the lid on that box, did he? Right? He was not so focused that he became obsessed with being the greatest hitter in the world, but instead allowed another possibility. And he had never allowed his failing to define him. You can think about it in this way. If the world's greatest pitcher was living in the little boy all along and he was too obsessed with being the greatest hitter, the pitcher would have never been released. So the question becomes, 
Am I doing this my way, which is the only way, or am I allowing room for the possibility that that inexhaustible universe may have other ideas for my life? A grander divine idea for this center. You are the co-creator of your own reality. And the inexhaustible supply of the universe is living within you. I cannot say it enough. You are the source. You are the real deal. You are the source in, in a physical body, but the spirit in which you dwell and dwells as you is far greater than anything you have ever imagined in your life. And no one has the power to deprive you of anything. Be who you want to be. And it is in your daily practice, whatever that spiritual practice looks like, silence. You can stretch beyond the limits that you have imposed on yourself to realize that that divine vibration of love that is always seeking you, always calling you forward through your desires and goals and dreams that move through the universe like stars, like rockets, planting the seeds that will mold and shape new ideas in your life in every breath that you take. And we can embody this truth right here and right now. That spirit is breathing itself as us because spirit is experiencing the world through you and as you. Now, the other thing that I want you to understand that I think is very important is that unity and uniformity are not the same thing. No two blades of grass are alike. No two snowflakes are alike. And what does this mean spiritually? It means that incarnated within each one of us is not only this divine spark, not only the incarnation of the living spirit of the cosmos, but a unique presentation of the cosmic whole. You are unique and what you bring to the world is unique. What does this mean? Stop trying, stop it right now. Stop trying to be who you think society wants you to be or who your friends and your family tell you who you are. You are love. And love demands that you be your authentic self. Being aware of your attitude and embodying this truth means raising your vision to spirit and taking it off the mundane and putting it on the possibilities. This is where you build trust in yourself. In order to change your attitude, you have to become aware of where you are right now. You have to tell the truth of your experience and lean into that truth. One of the things that I always say is never waste your pain. Use it. And just like when you fly, you have to create a flight plan for your for your attitude, right? Sometimes you get blown off course, but you have instruments and tools that help you to readjust. You have a radio to call for help. In the spiritual realm, you have prayer and meditation and practitioners and a helpline. And all of this is available 24 seven. And you can think about it this way. When we experience bad weather, how did you handle that? What was your attitude? Did you moan and complain? And if you did, did it change the situation? Was it still snowing? Right? Or did you make the best of it? Having a negative attitude doesn't change the situation. It just makes you miserable. Because the truth is, it is what it is. And as Alfred Rain, uh, Rainwright said, there's no bad weather, uh, only unsuitable clothing. <laughs> so it's not about spiritual bypassing. I'm not saying that or saying things are good when they're not, but you get to choose how you respond to life. 
And there's a big difference between reacting and responding. And you have the whole power of the universe behind that response. Do I respond from love or? The choice to choose love can sometimes feel like something that only applies to moments of crisis. You know, like when you're leaving a marriage or starting a new business or preparing to climb Mount Everest, you know. But in truth, the opportunity to choose love 